Yes, she is good all the time. Amen, amen. Man, that was beautiful. Wow. God is good all the time. Yes. Whew. If you believe that, can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. I want to live in such a way where that's just, that becomes automatic. <coughs> Melvin, is that for me or? Okay. Oh, down a little, he said. Oh, up. Oh, okay, my bad, my bad. All right. <laughs> so, sorry about that. Uh, I want to read something out of um, Psalm 73. It says, My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Um, so, man, what a, what a just a powerful, powerful um, verse. I'm going to read it again. It's just too good. My flesh and my heart, my heart may fail. Uh, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Um, so if you come in week after week, you hear me say this, but, uh, but today's a little different because I want to say this. I want to bring back the boldness of God's Word. I want to stop sugarcoating it. I want to stop tampering with it like the book of Hebrews talks about. I want to bring back God's Word where we can walk on this and you don't have to ask someone what kind of kingdom work you're doing because it becomes so automatic because you're you're committed, you know what commitment looks like to the Lord, and you're not answering to man, but you're answering to the Lord Jesus Christ, and man, I just want that so bad for everybody in this church. So let's pray. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, will I appease you, or will I please you? And Lord, I believe if I'm uh, pleasing you, then I'm, I'm walking with a, uh, just with a heart to know your heart for that portion forever, Lord, that that we may be bold, Lord. Uh, that we can't, that our opinions don't really matter, Lord. It's what's in your word. Will we stand on that and walk in it with boldness to be immovable, as the scriptures say. Stand firm. Lord, thank you for this time. Uh, may we gather and unplug from our phones and from the outside world um, so we can come in here and learn about you Praise your name and be able to leave here as a deployment, not as an empty church, as, as a deployment to go out and be soldiers for your kingdom. Thank you for this, Lord, your beautiful name. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, good morning. Your hymn book. Yeah, y'all can say it back. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, um, read your hymn book, turn page 213. Stand up. We're going to sing about the holiness of God. Holy, holy, holy. So, first and last verses of holy, holy, holy. Mm -hmm. And uh, take 213. Sing out. Look at the word.
You may be seated. Um, so, announcements, I'm going to keep this uh, very brief. And I'm, I'm aiming for December 1st, where I'm going to kind of cut out announcements and we'll have a sheet in the back that will say everything. And that's, I don't know, that's been heavy on my heart for a while. I want this to really be a time where we we take it as serious as, and I'm sorry, it's going to seem like I'm beating up on people. And believe me, I told you I want to get a big giant mirror at some point that slides down when I say this. So I'm looking in the mirror. God knows our hearts. But I, I want to take it so serious as if it were a concert. Oh, and I know I wouldn't be late. I, I'd be early, and that's not knocking on anybody that came in. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about a mindset for the Savior that created us and created this world for, for us to prevail, for His plan to prevail, His purpose, His kingdom, uh, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And man, I just, that's important to me. So let's keep this going. The 20th is really all you need to know. That's coming up this Wednesday. We do need uh, people, there's still some sign up items that you can bring. Uh, but more importantly, we really, really need uh, someone to help with uh, cleanup and not just the same people that set it all up because this is a big job and some of it actually starts tomorrow uh, i want to get things and prepping things so uh please if you can uh, sign up to, to help us uh, uh clean up that would be great and at this time we will take up the offer
right on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen.
Amen. All Amen. about faith. I'm about faith. Amen. I like to do good. I like to yes. treat people good. Yes. And thank Diane for calling me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just got back. Just sit down, good. And she called me. Mm -hmm. I said, I knew it was her because I saw her phone number. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. I appreciate it. Now we're going to do a little. Come on, go with me to my father's house. Mm -hmm. Come on, go with me. Like that because we're in a world today where I'm telling you, hey man, I'm telling you, 
system. You, it's got to be a daily walk. Yes. It has to be a daily walk. Do not stir from this. Yes. Do not do it. Mm -hmm. uh, we were at a conference. Um, of what a conference, but yesterday we were at a big uh, prayer meeting, and it's probably over 100 people at uh, Good News Church. And um, uh, <laughs> on the way there, I wasn't going to tell this, but I have to, because many of the, the guy that spoke actually spoke on this. On the way there, there was a, a church on the right, and it was a huge sign. And uh, connected to that huge sign, now I'm talking representing Christ, uh, was a rainbow flag. And I'm sorry. Uh, look, I'm just going to say it now. now. I'm not talking about meeting people with love. I'm I, I want all that to always be a factor. I'm not talking about being judgmental or anything like that. But that is not okay. It's not okay. Because what's going to happen is, eventually, this is the word. Just like Psalm 91, do I want to dwell in the secret place or just visit? Right. And what I'm going to do is I start bending that word. And then bending it, and then bending it before you know it. Just like many others in the Bible, we've, we've gotten away from God's Word and what it is. Uh, again, well, you know, because we're putting, we're putting our spin on things. The Bible's the Bible, His Word, His truth. I don't need to put a spin on it. Well, you know, it, it, it's different if abortion is no. No, it's not different. It's in here. Amen. Not okay. Amen. And, I, and, and I, want, I want to follow up because it's my spirit to say, hey, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Because that's what we're missing. We're missing this. This is not a feel-good message to get you through your sins that you've dressed up and disguised and inviting Satan into your house and giving him some tea. This Amen. isn't that. This isn't that. I can't be that anymore. It can't be that anymore. And I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Uh, and maybe it's just a habit saying sorry. So today we're going to be in Ephesians 4, 4 through 7. Uh, last week we touched on some stuff, but I'm so excited about this. If you weren't here last week, uh, just check it out on YouTube uh, because this is just awesome. But it's certainty through unity. How certain am I about this unity that, 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 that Paul's speaking of here? How, like for real now, I'm being serious. Like when I hear songs like that, I, I don't think, man, like a, 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 the year anniversary of my brother is coming up this Thursday. And, and it, there's a part of me that, that brings a sadness because I love them and things like that. But then there's a part of me when I hear this music where I'm like, man, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Wow. You did that for me. I didn't deserve it. I wasn't in the vicinity of deserving it. So how will I walk? How will I talk? Will I feed the poor? Will I need someone to say, hey, do this? No. It should be automatic. Automatic, you know, automatic. Without the trumpets, you don't need to sound off the trumpet. Lord knows your heart. Just keep keep doing His will. Keep doing it. And it's so important. Certainly through unity. Uh, before we get into it, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you, thank you, Lord. Uh, I don't know how many bold Christians uh, will be left, Lord. I don't know. Uh, standing on Your word, standing on the promises. I, I can't speak on that, Lord. But I pray that. As for me and my house, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll worship, worship you, Lord. We will worship you. And we will not bend from that. We will not watch filth on TV. We will not uh, speak in a manner that's not honoring to you. And Lord, if you're knocking at our door, I will not have to stall my wife because i got to get rid of some things that aren't honoring to you, Lord. I'm, I, I, I want the plea right now, Lord. I want to give it all. I'm all in. I want to, I want to, I'm all in. I want to commit to that, Lord. And Lord, will you hold me to this when I when I when I backslide from it? Lord, just keep me focused, uh, because the devil he, he's crafty, but he's not you. So, Lord, uh, thank you for thank you for this service, and Lord, uh, may your word feed people and transform them. In your name, Amen. amen. So, certainly through unity, as Ephesians four uh, four through seven, it says there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope. That belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. All right, all right. One God and Father of all. Check this out. Who is over all and through all and in all. Amen. 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 I, I, I'm going to read this at my house and I'm doing, and I'm looking at commentary and Amen. things like that, and that's a beautiful thing, but I'm like, wait a second. Hold on, Lord, you are everywhere? And that's, that can't be. You can't be. You can't be. Yeah, yeah, I'm everywhere. And man, I just, I, we need, I don't want to forget that. 
I want to be in such a place in my life, which I've been before, where I'm like, I don't see a way out. Man, if you're in that position and you're serving the Lord and you don't see a way out, man, praise God because He's with you. He is with you. He'll show you the way out. Just trust Him. Stay committed. Stay obedient to the Word. Man. But grace was given to each one of us according, check this out, to the measure of Christ's gift. Oh, man. So today, knowing the source and tapping into the source for a true unity, they're, they're two different things, really. Knowing the source and tapping into the source. Because I've heard so many people so many times say, hey, yeah, I, um, I've read the Bible. I'm like, no, man. hey, fist bump, man, that's good, that's good. Uh, anyway, I'll get ready to go to a cake party. Uh, oh, 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 all right. Oh, all right, cool. So you've read it, but you're not living it. And, and that's where I don't want to be. And that's why when I see this, all these alls and the gifts that he's offering, nothing to do with my, on, on any merit of my own, I want this. And I don't want it to just be a Sunday thing. I want it to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The way I'm screaming now, I want it to happen on Wednesday. You know, and, and, and it's, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to say it's lost. I, 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 I don't need to be every week say what we're not doing. Let, let's tap into what we do now. That's the certainty. So uh, knowing the source and tapping into the source uh, for a true unity are two very different things. Kind of like knowing that Jesus died for me, but zero proof of me living for him. And I'm talking picking up your cross and following him. What does that look like in your life? Hey, what does it look like in your life to Christ? Not to the other Christian that doesn't see you all the time. But y'all should be doing this, and you should be thinking, get out of that. I don't, I don't even let that stuff hit my head anymore. Right. I know in my prayer room, I know, in, in, and that's not being like a know-it-all, but I, I, you'll know, that because, how will you know? Because the Word says, He'll direct you. He'll direct your path, the Word says. Yes. Meditate on the Word. Take every thought captive. Yes. So let's break down and understand the who and the how of the source, and the where and the when of the application that ties this true unity together in our everyday walk. So verse 4, it says there is one body and one spirit just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that's so beautiful. Man, that's so beautiful. So so the who of the source, uh, source, of course, is the Holy Trinity. Like think about this and, and I'll break it down a little bit, but it, that used to really confuse me. I was like, man, I just don't understand the Holy Trinity and all this, but just hang with me for a second. Jump on this little roller coaster. Uh, working on your behalf, there is one body and one spirit. We have unity because of what we share in common with Christ. Now, this is for the born-again believer that's confessed with his lips. The spirit bestowed oneness of all true believers, the bond of peace, and the spiritual cord that surrounds and binds God's holy people together. The bond is simple. The bond is love. The bond is love. No matter what, no matter what my thoughts are trying to tell me, because that's where Satan's going to try to get in first. I used to have a friend of mine that said, don't go up there without adult supervision. When I start getting down a way where that where I'm nervous and it just seems like we're going to fold, uh, Jamie will tell you, I'm like, look, we got to walk away from this. Uh, uh, we got to do this. we got to do this. I, I, I can't do it anymore. Well, that's good that I can't do it anymore because he's with me. And if I believe that and I'm certain of that, then I'm going to keep trudging, even if trudging means I, like I'm in quicksand, because guess what? If I'm in quicksand and the Spirit is bestowed upon me, and that's the gifts that He's given me, I'm in quicksand with the one person or the trifecta that I'm getting ready to get into that I want to be with. That's a good person to be with. That's like saying, hey, 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 the three, the four of us, and they're like, there's only one of you. No, 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 brother. No, no, much, much more than that. That's what you see. Don't let that naked eye get you. Get you. Hey, nice try, wrong guy, right? I don't want that. The source is the trifecta. It's the body of Christ composed of every believer since the Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Without distinction. By the work of the one spirit and we must be certain of the hope. It is a pledge and a promise of eternal inheritance given to each believer. And check this out. I love this word. Man, look this word up later, please. And sealed. Sealed to each believer by the one spirit. Sealed. So Paul refers to three aspects of the Holy Spirit working within us. The source is that Christ anointed us. That's the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea behind the anointed is that we are prepared and empowered for service. For service. Think about that. For service. He sealed us. That's the second one. Anointed us, sealed us. 
In the ancient world, and I thought this was interesting, a seal was used to identify and protect. To identify and protect. If something was sealed, everyone knew who it belonged to. The seal had an stigma, and the seal prevented anyone else from tampering with this item. So that's what the Holy Spirit's done for me, and you sealed it. So he's anointed, he sealed it, the Holy Spirit is upon us to identify us and to protect us. And the last one, of course, is the guarantee. And the guarantee is the word guarantees. The word, not the world, the word guarantees. Uh, the word guarantee is the word for a down payment. I, I just thought this was so great. We have been given the Holy Spirit as a down payment for the fullness of what God has done and will do. The down payment's there. It's already, I love those little uh, things on Facebook where it's like a receipt and it says, uh, I've done this, I feel this way on this, and then it says, paid in full, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so the who of the source is you and three others, once again, on your behalf. That's the, that's the, that's the certainty of, uh, of, of, of you walking in this. That's the certainty of it, knowing the source. And too many times I believe we know the source, I believe we have the battle plan, and I believe we just go out of here and we forget it. I believe we get back to the gossip. I believe you, you, That's why I love when someone will tell me about someone that slipped drinking alcohol and, and they'll question their salvation. Meanwhile, they're gossiping and, uh, and, and, and dabbling in gluttony and everything else. And I'm like, oh, no, bro, that's not the way this thing works. Hey, hey that's not the way this works. You know, that's when you want. That's why I wish I had like a, a what I would call a Jesus mirror, that's where I just pull it out of my pocket and do that. And be like, what are you doing? And just take a look into that thing. There's a lot of truth in there. Hey, I can fool a lot of people. I can't fool him. This trifecta, the Trinity. Huh. Mm -mm. Let's look at the how of the uh, source. Verse five is beautiful. Oh man, so beautiful. It says, "One Lord." Think about this. This is whenever you get tripped up. And you don't know what to say to the uh, uh, to someone that doesn't believe in Christ. Yeah. Maybe the Muslim that doesn't believe. Maybe someone that's a, a, a atheist. It, it's as simple as this. Check this out. Hey, uh, what makes your God so different? Check what's right here in verse five. It, it don't even have to be your words, your opinion. It, it is what it is. Let's check it out right here. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. I don't have a mic, and I don't want to rip this out of my ear. But if I had a mic, that'd be a mic drop. That'd be a total mic drop. That's all, that's all you need to know. Now, that's not in an arrogant way. That's God's word. One, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. That's, that's the how in Jesus we share. One body, one spirit, one hope of our calling. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And one Father. Wow. Each of these common areas is greater than any potential differences. Remember, with confidence, the next time you feel lost or confused, what Christ said as he ascended into heaven in Acts 1, verse 8. But you, I think we forget this. And this is why I'm, I, I'm so passionate about this message today. I just think we've forgotten this sometimes. We walk around like, ah, I just want to, hopefully that, man, I'll tell you what, man, I hope that thing clears before this clears. And money and money and more money and this and that. Man, stop that. Listen. Listen what it says. This is not just them. This is a promise to us. This is the source that we tapped into. And if we're believing it and walking in it, listen. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And can I add, and I'm not adding to God's scripture, but in Richmond, Virginia. Amen. In Richmond, Virginia, everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Right. Yeah, everywhere. Cross the street. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Everywhere. Neighborhoods. Everywhere. You know, hey, look, I, I told uh, Sister Lucy one time, and I don't mean this in an arrogant way. Once again, the Lord knows my heart. You don't have to ask me if I'm doing things for different people. It's become who I am. I want that to become who I am. That's one faith, one Lord, one baptism. It's, it's all of it. It's the whole package. It's not just coming here and preaching a good word. It's, it's tonight at 6 o'clock going to a revival, but not just going to a revival. What am I taking from it? So when I go in the store and the lady next to me says, ah, man, I'm so sorry, sir. My, my card doesn't work. And my first thought was, mine does. Now, did I have that money? It's not mine to begin with. He'll provide if I'm truly believing that and walking in it. 
Yes. He will provide. Yes. I'm telling you, think of a dark time in your life where you didn't tap into the source and then you, you got committed enough to where you did it. You just know it's certain. Because yes. I used to wonder that when people were going through what I thought to be uh, hell, they kept walking, they kept praising, they kept getting up, they kept suiting up, they kept feeding the poor, they kept going to wherever it was. The gospel was in them. They couldn't hog it because it's in them. It's an everyday language. Everyday language. So the who and how of tapping into the only true source is clear. His church is complete in us. In us. Man, in us. Wow. Now the question is the where and the when of the application. This is so important to me. The application is always important. Hey, look, I've said this a million times. I grew up in churches. Now, before I down other churches or something like that, that's not what I'm doing. Maybe my ears and my commitment at the time weren't fixed on Jesus. I can say that. Mm -hmm. But I felt like when I left, all I got was a history lesson of the Bible. There was no application. I want the application. I don't want someone to... I'm telling you, it's cold out. You don't need a coat drive for someone to tell you to buy some coats. You can ask my wife. This is not sounding off a trumpet. Make this your, make this church your everyday thing just to put four or five jackets in the back of you and, and, and make... Hey, be, like I said last week, be intentional. Go places where you know for a fact someone's going to need it. Don't wait for them to come to you. Go places. I used to do it. And I didn't, hey, I didn't get on, I didn't do a bunch of stuff uh, advertising and I just did it. Mm -hmm. Hey man, you look cold. You want a jacket? Uh, believe me, if they're, if they're calling for flurries or something like that, I got a guy a blanket one time and he loved it. He, you should have seen him. He was like, it was brand new. I said, is this for me? I was like, yeah, it's for you. Thank you. No, no. And it's okay to say you're welcome. I got into that last week. It's okay to say you're welcome. But it's his church complete in us. This is, hey, don't you understand that I have to, I'm going to say this every week until I beat y'all to death with it. This is where we come. This is the, this is the, this is the lesson. These are the, imagine, imagine, literally, I want you to start thinking about this every week. This is where we come to do battle out there. This is where we come to hear about the love, to be about the love, to have a scriptural attitude, to walk in the love, to pray with people that, that normally wouldn't mix with us, that normally don't look like us. Man, that's it. Just go, man. Go everywhere. That's what the two-by-two two is. The two-by-two two is not just handing out a card and saying here. They're saying, hey, what needs do you have? What needs? I've talked to some school teachers over there that go through some things. Hey, call us. Call us. Let's pray. Let's do some things. Let us tell you about, hey, and when they're looking at you, like, where does this come from? It comes from the trifecta I'm speaking of. Because we've tapped into the source. Because we know for a fact the one Lord, one faith, one baptism is true. And we're living it like it's true. I don't want them to have to remind me every day, hey, Scott, get out there. Do something. The harvest is plentiful. No, just do it. Just do it. Go buy some gloves. Get some stuff from Amazon. Put it in your, seriously. That should be, man, that should be second nature. Second nature. Now the question is the where and the when. Of the application of the unity of our gifts. Verses 6 and 7 tie it all together in my opinion. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all. <laughs> Hard to read that without weeping. And in all. Uh, so where is the one God, the Father? <laughs> Guess what? And I'll put this in big letters. Guess what? Everywhere. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. I don't, you're never going to see me up here say, Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm begging you to come in. No, he's here. Hey, I don't, again, I, don't, I, I say that with boldness, not arrogance. If you believe what he says, I'm going to send you the helper, and he's saying it here, I'm everywhere, and you're a born-again believer, he's with us. The Holy Spirit of Jesus, I mean, Jesus Christ. I, and sometimes I can't... Amen. Man, Hallelujah. Man, for me, Lord? Yes. Stop all that, oh, woe is me. We get that you went through a hard life. We all had a hard some, yes. something. If I, if I said if, you, if you've ever been through any pain in this church, I, I don't have to. I don't have to ask that because I'm sure every single hand will go up. Of course it would. Yes. The question is, where did I take the pain? How did I filter the pain? Mm -hmm. How did I filter taking the, every thought captive? Was I being certain that one God and Father over all is in all and through all and of all? Was I really certain of that? Was there proof in my life? Forget about the Joe that said, oh, he's not a Christian. He said, stop that. That's the devil. Stay focused. It's so important to me. All over and through and all. Man, this is the basic doctrine of God taught in Scripture. Man. 
I have to, it, it was so hard to do this, but I've got to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. Yet, for us, there is one God, the Father, from whom all things, and from for, for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom the Holy Spirit, all about Jesus, we exist. That's the only reason. That's the only reason. And that's just beautiful to me. That's the source. How do I tap into something? I, I want this. Hey, hey, Scott, I'm not where you are. But, hey, if you want to be where I'm at, and you're, and you're not, first of all, you're not measuring up to me. But I would say the first thing, that's the best place to start. Amen. Hey, Heavenly Father, Lord, I don't have it all figured out. I ain't even in the vicinity. I still got some strongholds that are on me, Lord. I don't know how to tap into this source. Will you help me, Lord? Will you, will, you, will you help me? The man said that your word says that when I said and confess with my lips that you are who you say you are, the great I am, the great Jehovah, the great Yahweh. Oh, man. What, Lord, can, but can you show me how to use these gifts? Can you show me how to use these gifts? You know, that's the man. I want to take that so serious. Man, please take it serious. It is serious. I'm too busy. What? Too busy for what? Too busy. Think about it. Sometimes, and I, hey, I'll put myself here too. I told you, I'm going to get that mirror's going to happen. It's just going to, I'm going to be able to push a button. And the mirror's going to come down. I'm saying it about myself. Because sometimes when I'm saying I'm too busy, the Lord's saying, then you're saying you're too busy to do my work. Now, run yourself ragged? No, that's not that. I believe there's a difference between a bunch of activities and being active for the Lord. I truly do. And there's nothing wrong. I'm not, I'm not, we, we do some activity. I'm not talking about that. But convince yourself in the Word and watch what He does. Convince yourself in the Word in such a way that I've, I, week after week I say, talk about tapping into this source where you can just, it's going to seem odd. I know it is. It was for me. You can ask Jamie. Grab your husband or Husbands, grab your wife and say, look, let's pray before you go to work. Mm -hmm. Pastor, I don't know how to pray. Part, what do you got going on in your life? Mm -hmm. Tell them. Prayer, supplication, part of the source, part of the one Lord, one faith, one baptism. It's all part of it. Mm -hmm. So to wrap it up in verse 7, oh man, how great is this? But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gifts. Man, what kind of grace is this? So the win is easy. It's when we confess with our lips and become saved. And knowing the source of unity of the who and the how <laughs> and the where is where we are now. Hey, stop thinking, when I get here, I'm going to do this. It will never happen, I promise you. It will never happen. Hey, when we get 100 people, we're going to do this. No, that will never happen. That's why, I'm so, that's why I love that individual, individual love. There are people I visit you would never know. Guess what? That's okay. You don't need to know. That's all right. You know who does know? Jesus! <laughs> I love that. He knows. I don't need to tell eight people. I don't need to tell ten people because then I'm too afraid that what used to have me battered down in sin where Satan was having his way, that I'm going to start getting puffed up, that I'm going to lose my humility, that that pride's going to slip on in, and the devil's going to start, and before you know it, it's all about Scott. No, 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 love. Once again, nice job, wrong guy. And I'm going to wake up every day like there's a battle in front of me with the armor that I that he's provided through what I'm talking about here. He's provided it. You have this same armor. We all have it. Different gifts. Different people can do different things. Different. I, I get it. If you're, uh, and, and I don't mean this in a funny sense. If you're 80s, uh, heaven forbid, or not even heaven. It's a great thing. 90s, pray. You can always pray. When someone says, well, I can't do all that, you can pray. Yes. You can definitely pray. Come on out. Yeah. So the where, and <laughs> I love this. Grace was given, period. There's not much commentary to that. We all have grace given according to the measure of Jesus' gifts. This is the basis of God's distribution of spiritual gifts through His church. Grace, the free, unmerited giving of God. No one deserves or has earned spiritual gifts. <clears throat> no one. We don't earn that. No one's earned it. 
And, and I used to hear that, like, wait a second, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like filthy rags in the eyes of a righteous Lord. You know why I didn't feel like that back then? Because I was dabbling with sin. I was inviting uh, Satan into my house. Uh, and it all starts with what I opened up with. It all starts with, well, I mean, abortion is not that bad if, well, you know, I mean, I can still curse. And then before you know it, that's why I don't feel like filthy rags. Amen. When I felt like filthy rags, it's when I, the closest I got ever to this Holy Spirit, to this trifecta, to this one Lord that's over all, in all, through all. That's when I felt like filthy rags. You think it'd be the opposite? It's not, my friends. I promise you. I'm telling you, it is not. So this week, have the certainty through unity to tap into the source. And if you're not tapping into it, call someone. Call and ask them. You know, just say, hey man, look, I'm a little confused. I know he's everywhere. I know I've confessed with my lips. But, you know, I just don't want to come off as that guy. What, what, what guy? Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit. You're on his behalf. Right. He's done all that. He's done it all on Calvary. Right. He's just asking you to go out there each day. Right. And instead of, oh, that's just not my style. Now, and, and that's not saying what Paul said. He said, don't neglect your gifts. I understand what he means by that. We all don't have the same gift, but the gift in this case that we all have is the Lord Jesus Christ working with us through the Holy Spirit and what he did on the cross. No merit of my own, nothing I did on my own, and he's working in us. And when that's in me and through me, I can't go wrong. It's impossible. You can't go wrong. I have had $15 in my bank account, and, and I'm dead serious about this. And this is not a me up here poor mouth. I've had $15 in my account, and I remember telling Jamie, God's got us. God's got us. And sure enough, guess what? Prayers were answered. By the end of the week, that bank account didn't look like that. And I didn't go rob a bank. I didn't get away from God's word. I didn't go rob a bank. But I think of that certainty and unity. And I have to read this. I'm going to get uh, Diane to slowly play the music because... Uh, this, this story jumped all over me when I was um, uh, on this unity and, and, and the source and mm -hmm. the when, which is the when and where, which is here and now and through all and, and the source I'm tapping into and, and what it looks like uh, to tie it all together. So I'm going to tell a story and I can almost promise you I'm not going to get through it, but I'm going to try my best. Because mm -hmm. this is the certainty we need. James M. Black was the youth pastor at church in Williamsport, Pennsylvania in 1893. One day, he was on his way to the post office and thought he would take a shortcut on an alley, which he had never used before. James did not know the poverty and misery uh, that that alley contained. As he made his way through the alley, he noticed a ragged young girl, daughter of an alcoholic, sweeping a real rear porch on the apartment. He said, do you have a church, she asked. No, sir, uh, nothing proper to wear, was her response. What is your name, he said. She said, my name is uh, Bessie. Bessie, I will have my wife and another lady visit you soon. He said, he quickly continued his way to the post office. James' wife and another lady from the church visited Bessie and took her some dresses. Bessie started attending the service both Sunday morning and Sunday evening. An hour before the evening service, the young people met for training. It was James' custom to have the young people recite a Bible verse when they called upon attendance, when they were called upon for attendance. One Sunday evening, Betsy's name was called. There was no response. James was very concerned because she had never been absent before mm -hmm. since being invited. He was concerned that her drunken father might have refused to let her come or maybe she was sick. After church that evening, James and his wife went to Bessie's apartment to check on her. When they arrived, they found that she was very sick. Her father had no money for a doctor, so James called his own doctor and asked to come see the girl. The doctor came immediately and diagnosed Bessie with uh, pneumonia. On their way home, James thought about how sad it was that Betsy's name at the young people's meeting and she was not there. 
at the young people's meeting. When James reached his home, all of a sudden, like a day spring, the first stanza came full. He then went to the piano and played the music, just as you find the hymns today, note for note. It has never been changed. Betsy died just a few days after the diagnosis, and the song was that he sang was at Betsy's funeral. He sang it for the first time. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright, and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather on the other shore, and when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Man. I'm not worthy to be there. And you knew this. When we pick up our swords, when we get on our knees, when we polish our armor of God, when we have certainty of this, oh man, this beautiful unity. I don't want to fight. I don't need to. I've got him by my side. The trifecta. It's beautiful. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful. That's you today and you are not saved. You do not know. You want the promises of what this, this certainty through unity is. And you're, not, you're not sure of your salvation. You're not, hey, look, I don't care if it takes another 20 minutes. We have people here that won't just say, hey, you're saved, cool, one and done. No, that's not what it's about. It's not what the Bible says. Yes, confess with your lips. But get a song, get, get a side of a Christian brother and a Christian sister to help you out. To start understanding some daily devotions and, and putting putting not the work in because it, it, it won't become work. Once that Holy Spirit gets a hold of you, it won't become work. It's something you'll want to do. You will want to do it. But don't care anymore about the, the, the things of this. I really don't. The money that I've, I've had the money and I've lost the money, and I've, I'll be honest with you, the lower my account is, I feel the, the more joy than I've ever felt. I, I, again, I'm not saying do not have money. I'm not what I'm saying. But that's just for me. I want them to just continue to use me. Earthen vessel. As broken as I was. I've said it up here a million times. I brought them the broken pieces. Shards, cut my arms and everything. Lord, I can almost picture them standing in line. Lord, surely you can't use this. It's too broken. There's no way you can use it. Oh, my son. My son, not Scott. My daughter, not Jane. My daughter. Beautiful masterpiece because of what I did at Calvary. Oh, man. Mm. So if you are not born again, please, I promise you, you can ask any any born again believer in here, you can ask them. Man, don't walk out of here without that. Just confess with your lips. As I begin to pray, please do business at the altar. Personally, I think that's lost over the years. Uh, and that's not to say you can't do it in your seat. I understand that. Uh, but I, I'm all in these days. I'm all in. Where back in the day I had a... The Lord would say, Scott, what's behind your back? Oh, no, no. I'm hiding some stuff just in case this doesn't work out. No, 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 no. He always works out. He's in all, through all, one Lord, one baptism, one faith. He's everywhere. No matter what you're going through, we don't serve a, a circumstantial God. Amen. We don't have to appease Him. We can please them. And sometimes that pleasing means a lot of tears, a lot of discomfort, and a lot of pain. If Paul can do it in prison, I think I can do it in, this, in Richmond, Virginia, a beautiful home, getting in a beautiful car with a beautiful wife. I've had no excuse. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, <laughs> Lord, what will it look like? How many will it be? Will it be like Gideon, Lord? Will it only be 300? When will we stop making excuses, Lord? When will we bow on an old-fashioned altar and weep for you, Lord? Oh, Lord. Lord, I can't even make it through some of the Christian movies without just weeping. Thank you for what you brought me through to bring me to. And Lord, 
when you take me to those deep waters, I know now that I don't have to be scared because you're not taking me out there to drown me, Lord, or, or see me fail. That's impossible. You're taking me to, to cleanse me. Oh, Lord, how can you be so good, Lord, when I was so bad? Lord, thank you. Lord, I ask a fresh anointing over every soul in this church that we may go out there and do your work, your way, Lord. That when we get to the gates and we say, Lord, I never did that for you, you'll look at me and you'll look at them and say, if you did it for one, you did it for me. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Lord, I want to hear that. Lord, maybe someone here didn't hear that from a father or a mother, but Lord, your word speaks that every day out loud. I'm proud of the men and women of this church that we can go out and be the church and we don't have to be told to go visit someone, that it becomes automatic. That when I'm going in the store, I don't have to be judgmental of if that homeless guy's a drunk. Lord, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't know a drink. I saw how that worked out with his commitment and his obedience. Lord, take that any kind of judgmental thoughts out of my <laughs> that I might know better. I can't know better without you and your word, Lord. Lord, walk with us this week in a way that will just... <laughs> where people will know, like Acts 3, Lord, well, they, where, where it says, Lord, I can only imagine. These educated men knew, oh, they knew Peter and John had been with you because of the believers. They were astonished, Lord. Educated men, they were astonished. Said they, were, they knew it, that they had been with you. Lord, oh, I want that to be me. Oh, man. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for everybody that showed today. Will we go out of here as soldiers? Or will we put our Bibles on the shelf, knock the dust off next week, and come back and do our check marks? Lord, I pray that that's not the case. Let us get an intentional for you. In your beautiful name, amen. 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 Thank you so much. Wednesday, please come and join us. Break bread with us. And I really mean that. Uh, bring someone... But if you're going to bring someone, please put it back on the, uh, the sheet just so we know how many. Uh, I'll be starting to get some stuff tomorrow. And, uh, and everybody, some people are bringing things. Look on the sheet in the foyer and see what, what we need. And, uh, I think we'll have a good time. It's at uh, 6 p.m. And uh, I understand people work, so if you're running a little late, hey, come. Come. And, and I know someone told me recently, I don't like coming because I don't come to your church. And I was like, well, come for that reason. Come because I believe Jesus wants you to come. Amen. Yeah. You know, I really do. Uh, mm -hmm. Hey, mm -hmm. when will I have that kind of attitude? <laughs> if, what, what would he do? That's right. The girl with the oil didn't get the cheap oil. That's right. No, 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 no. She bought the best there is. Top shelf. So we'll be we treating people like that this week while inviting them. Uh, to come break bread. And I love that. Break bread with us. Come. Let us love on you. Let us talk to you. Let us see your needs. Let us hopefully ask, hey, what are your prayer needs? Do you have any prayer needs? Yes, a call them all is beautiful, but what about our call them all? What about our call to all? For Christ. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. I'm going to ask Dusty to close us out. Father God, we just come to you right now to thank you for the word Pastor Scott spoke today, oh Lord. May we apply it to our life. When we walk out of here, Lord, we walk into the mission field. There are many who are lost, oh Lord, who need you. They're broken. They're hurting. But they all need you, oh Lord. May we be the one that shares you with them, oh Lord, each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.